Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here, and welcome to The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium. Today we're going to be talking about schooling versus shoaling behavior, and how you can get that out of your fish, even in a nano tank. So, uh, first of all, let's define the two. What you're seeing here, this is called shoaling, and these are Phoenix Rasboras, or... Boraris mara, and they're similar to chili rasboras. They're even smaller. They're uh, about half an inch usually, uh, up to an inch, and with the males being on the smaller end. But what you're seeing right now, this would be considered shoaling behavior. Uh, this means that the fish in the s in the scope of the tank, they are loosely together, they're grouped together, uh, but they're not so tight as to form one entity. Whereas a school is a grouping of fish that actually moves with uh, almost an intentionality and a group, uh, a group uh, reasoning or, or rules. So a school actually has rules to it and that's different for every species of fish. So when we see a fish, uh, for instance, uh, let's see if we'll get them to come out. This is a little bit of just whoever shows up to the party type uh, examples, but <clears throat> when you have certain fish, like Corydoras for instance, in most aquariums, six to 10 of them, they're gonna, they're gonna shoal, and the shoal, uh, each fish is still making its own decisions, same with these rasboras here. Each fish is, you can see, foraging and just trying to decide, okay, what do I want to do? Now, there's safety in that uh, if something were to come and attack them, they're all together. You'll get more shoaling activity from one, just smaller fish, and fish that are uh, on the prey end of the spectrum rather than on the predatory end of the spectrum. But that is all relative. So here in this tank, uh, they're not schooling tight because there's nothing in here that's making them uh, prey, that's going to make them food. And they know that. They've gotten used to the tank already. Uh, same with this endler here. This is an endler that is basically uh, the biggest, baddest creature in the tank. And uh, it knows that you know, no big deal, and so do the uh, rasboras. However, you can encourage them to shoal and sometimes even school by feeding. So what we're going to do here, and we're actually, I guarantee you, so let's, let's zoom out for a second, and I guarantee you we will find here, uh, we are going to find a whole bunch of fish that we just did not see before. So, what I'm going to do is I've got uh, some mosquito larvae that I caught earlier in the day. Fresh mosquito larvae. Some of them are actually too big for the uh, rasboras anyhow. But we're going to let these mosquito larvae uh, go into the tank and you will see what fish are in the tank also with with these so once they get a taste of the food and you can do this by feeding uh at, at a, a certain time by making a noise and tapping on the glass as you feed live food helps definitely to bring out those instincts uh so to speak in the animals and down in here you'll see that they were foraging and now they're twitching a little bit more. They're, uh, they're really on the lookout for actual uh, food that they might need to chase down. And they use one another to shoal in many cases uh, in those circumstances. So you can encourage shoaling by feeding live food and by uh, simply just having numbers. Uh, 
Now, there are some fish that will actually school in your tank, and uh, one of those would be the rummy nose tetra. Uh, the rummy nose rasbora is another one that actually does pretty good. Um, the, uh, the neon blue or neon green tetra also uh, do a good job of schooling. And any fry uh, stand a good chance of coming out and exhibiting schooling behavior, that's for sure. Now these tin winnie danios that are in here, they're just shoaling and uh, same deal. But I've kind of got them trained because they know that they're on the bigger end of the spectrum. There you can see a phoenix uh, rasbora. This is what happens before they're ready to feed and if they're not excited, they look they can anyways, and oftentimes in pet stores they do, they look this dull. And so people overlook them instead of realizing that this is their state when you put them in an aquascape where they're able to shoal. Because the other thing about shoaling is it brings the males and females closer to one another, and so they're going to be flashing off and showing one another like look how quick i can move you see these guys they're actually eating little bugs is what they're doing and these little bugs have come out because earlier in the day all you need to do is you get a turkey baster and this works for corridors and things too if you have an established tank but you get a turkey baster you fill it with water uh you know a squirt of water and you go and that actually uh, that water blast will cause the the bottom of the tank. Hold on one moment. We'll try that one more time. Do, 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 do. Technical difficulty. All right. So the water blast will kick up all the little buggers that are going to be in your your tanks, especially if you have a substrate that is not uh, stone or sand so you're going to get everything from you guys can see it there's these little we call them seed shrimps but copepods moving around the shrimp are already moving in for the kill and we're going to see yep little worms nematodes all sorts of critters you can see the shrimp are just digging and digging and digging well they're going to team up with these nano fish your shrimp are and now all those little critters that have come out to uh, flee from that site where I just disturbed the soil, they're all coming out and moving towards, you can see little white spots, moving towards these nanofish, and these nanofish are going to collectively try to form a wall and eat all these little guys that come out. Uh, same thing is going on over here where we've got the uh, neo -car or we well, there's a Neocaridina blue shrimp, and then we've got uh, a, a golden babalti, uh, gold nebula shrimp, and then the rest are Malawa shrimp. Uh, a little hard to decipher between them all, but um, you can see how fired up the color is on these guys right now because of that little blast I did. Um, and it'll settle the, the shrimp and uh, just, you know, your other fish and stuff, they'll, they'll uh, kind of calm down and, and smooth all that out. But I just wanted to show you that other than fear, because you'll see schooling behavior when fear is the main initiator, whereas incentives is when you can get a lot of the uh, shoaling behavior and a lot of times it's tight enough with these small species that really getting the right number of them making food scarce enough you know not that they're starving by any means but that when there is food that they all rush in and work together that can really encourage that sort of behavior and when the conditions are right they end up actually schooling so over here in this little pocket you can see that the uh, Somfongzi rasboras and the Tinwini danios are shoaling. So they're shoaling because I put that food in the water. Whereas before, they were just interspersed all alone all throughout. Well, they actually light up with different colors from hormones and things like that. And you'll actually see uh, the brightest displays usually of these fish um, when they're spawning, eating live food, and schooling. So right here, 
uh, you can see there's two females with the big old belly and the male and there's about a dozen or so fish that were all kind of shoaling there before we surprised them now these guys are headed back around but the Samfongzi reservoir has also joined in. So part of it is trial and error to see who will school together or shoal together. Now right here, again, let me turn the, the lighting, the, the contrast down a bit. But they're still shoaling. And certain species are just known to do this. Uh, it's just part of their in, their, in their DNA. Whereas others need a little coercion. Um, a little coaxing. So over here in this tank, I wanted to show you guys the reed tetras. So these reed tetras, they will naturally school um, as well as, and so here you can see a lone one, um, but they're all hiding right now, right here in a tight uh, bait ball is what you'd call it in salt water but they're hiding and if we were to flush them out of there or if uh, one of these cribs uh, so the cribs they're kind of loners however their babies they do school with their babies which um, this the babies stay in a very tight school and I'm not sure where they're at right now hopefully hopefully I'll I'll spot them and I can show you an update on them and just uh, kind of point that out but the reason why the the tetras are all these reed tetras the neon blue tetras here's a kitty tetra they're all shoaling even though they're not the same species and up here here's more reed tetras they're shoaling for safety they actually are afraid of these cribs these cribs beat them up all the time which is a little unfortunate they don't actually hurt them they just scare them bad badly enough that uh, they don't want to put up with being around them so as long as you have room in your tank you'll see this behavior right here and so the schooling behavior let's see if we can spark it off maybe by uh, by feeding a little bit again uh, Feeding everyone at once is one way to do it. Um, you get schools that will split up and reform. Uh, that's kind of the nature of a school. Uh, usually you'll get a school um, or you'll get a shoal, a group of fish, and then that will form into a school. So we're getting close to a school here. There's no definite answer on what size it must be to, to, to meet that definition. But there's actually an entire study of the science of why fish school and how they f school and what it is that's going on. So here you can see the ember tetras have actually formed up in the interest of getting food. And these guys, the reed tetras, will get tight enough that they occupy the space of a formidable size presence of a fish now one way that animals that school uh, have as a defect defense mechanism is that they can split off from the school and confuse a lot of schooling fish tend to be very 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 reflective they have a lot of those uh, crystals in their flesh or in their uh, in their scales that are made out of uh, guarine and guanine and these cause uh, the sparkle that you see, the silver sparkle. Uh, and I know there's some dirt on the, or water marks on the back of the glass on the tank here. But you can see that when they're together, right now this would be considered a shoal. But watch what happens when I scare them. Or actually, let's wait and see if this crib actually comes up and kind of scares them. Once they bunch together, all their rules or I guess ideas, their actions become completely governed by something called, are you guys ready? So all the, the, the behavior is called emergent intelligence. And it is the way that swarms, that ant colonies, bees, schools, uh, birds in formation, 
it's how they form up and the rules that they use. So every species is going to be different. And while you might have multiple species uh, schooling up, really the, mul the multiple species are shoals within, the, they're a tight shoal. Each fish still has its own free will and may break off from the others. Now this guy is just eating in the background so he's not trying to harass them. But if I jar the tank a bit, let's see here. You can see that the fish immediately tighten up. They tighten up, they get together, and they behave as if they are a single fish. Every fish species is going to be different how they respond. Um, I'm still looking for those baby cribs because I guarantee they will be in a very tight school. Um, they're, they're just very hidden by mother and father. Because see here we've got one crib here. One, two, three, four, five. We have probably eight or nine cribs. But as soon as the danger was gone, you can see that these fish are shoaling again. And... A good example of shoaling always is uh, endlers or guppies, uh, you know, live bears. They tend to shoal all day. They hang out close to one another. Protection in numbers. Their tails are flashy. They confuse uh, would-be predators. And uh, they just use the law of averages that, you know, one of them will get eaten and uh, <laughs> most will get away. Well, when you see this schooling, like in these creatures, some will break up the school, and that's, that's one of the rules, and that's what confuses. But another type of schooling is bait balling, where they pull together tight and actually are perceived due to those reflections, uh, especially the, uh, the light that is coming that's a natural, uh, it's reflecting the sunlight naturally, that will actually cause predatory fish uh, to see the ultraviolet light reflecting through the water and confuse them as to if it's one fish or a couple medium fish or maybe it's, you know, yeah, it, it, maybe it's a bunch of little fish or maybe it's a huge fish. So the way that those uh, groupings form up Emergent intelligence, as it's called, like I said, is an entire field of study, and we have studied it, uh, we, <laughs> well, I have a little bit, but uh, humans have studied this to great effect, figuring out um, how to deliver packages more accurately, um, how supply chains should be working, because it really sets a few base rules, so... Maybe the, the fish on the far right, in the top far right, uh, if the fish on the left moves, he's going to pull himself together and stay next to that fish. If the one on the other side of him moves, he is free to do what he wants. And, you know, so there'll be like rules of movement instinctually. And, uh, you know, one fish can always come up and take the lead of the ball, um, but they're all going to maintain X amount of distance under this circumstance. So by putting in these rules in a computer, you can get the fish to behave less like individuals and more like a unit that seems coordinated, like it's doing some sort of synchronized swimming uh, or schooling, obviously. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that and show you guys that obviously you can get your fish to shoal by giving them food, but you can also put a false predator, or a real predator, I suppose, but I think the fish uh, not hurting each other would be preferable. And so you put them together, something like an angelfish, that causes a level of uh, they have to be on their toes. The, the fish have to be on their toes or they could get eaten. Maybe not the adult fish, but definitely the baby fish. So when you see that kind of behavior, you're going to get that shoaling also. Um, and it just it's just a matter of getting enough of the species to uh, get past that tipping point 
And same with the schooling. Most of the fish species that are social, that are they're not fish that are on their own all the time, most of these social uh, types of fish have a schooling point and a shoaling point. And it's learning where that is and the variables. So here, where we've got all the babies, they're going to be together so tightly that they're definitely a school. And they will uh, wait on commands and we don't know if they're chemical commands or um, you know the females flashing different colors or making a noise or flapping her tail I mean we really don't know uh, why or what signals uh, these babies to follow their parents around uh, so closely and following uh, seemingly rules of of how they should interact but they do, and uh, learning some of those rules can really um, can really help you uh, cheat the system and get some of that schooling behavior. Also, water flow plays a role. Uh, frequency of feeding, right here, uh, it's hard to see, but these fish are very tightly schooled. Um, wish this reflection would go away. Let's let's try this. Hold on. All right, that's better. So these fish are 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 a true school. Uh, they are small in numbers, but they're formed up. And when one does something, see, there comes the crib. That's why they're formed up. So this fish is going to break away, then reform, and then uh, they may move. So I'm going to tap the glass, and they all move. But they move together. They're not breaking off and running up here or whatnot. They're actually all still together. And they're formed up in a V or in a general pyramid shape uh, kind of thing. So I just find this really intriguing. And I'd love to hear how you get your fish to school or shoal. Uh, other than just that's what they do. It's their species. So let me know. Uh, especially on the nano level. And I think f some food reinforcement with a little bit of false predator fear, all that kind of stuff is really helpful and really leads to a dynamic tank. I mean, here they come around the front, a little more relaxed, turning back into a shoal. And uh, if you had a hundred of these things, imagine how much more fluid and dramatic that would be. So... Definitely consider doing a species-only tank uh, of, of something that schools. Uh, best bang for your buck, definitely. I think that these uh, Phoenix Rasboras are great. I got these from Aquatic Arts. And then I also think that uh, Tin Winnie Danios are a good one when they're in a group. Uh, blue Neon Tetras or Green Neon Tetras. And then the best the very best in the hobby uh, is going to be the rummy nose tetras uh, as they are true schoolers uh, in very tight fashion um, and it's very cool to watch uh, them it looks like jets flying in formation all right guys that's what i have to say please join in on the conversation let me know uh, if you know anything about emergent intelligence Companies like UPS and FedEx have actually spent millions and millions of dollars, uh, maybe even billions by this point, uh, studying animals and then uh, implementing, that's where they're spending the money, implementing new ways to set up hubs and reactionary uh, responses to when something breaks down in the line of supply. So maybe everybody sees food over here, everybody's swarming or schooling over there. Uh, and then it dissipates and so everyone's shoaling. Well, where should they form up next? Where's the best supply hub? All of this stuff comes from very simple rules that each little fish instinctually follows. Same with ants or bees and uh, a, a very small number of these uh, guidelines can cause immensely complex uh, behavior uh, that almost looks like it's random to us humans but it's not and uh, unlocking that is another secret history living in your aquarium
mystery. All right, guys. Please don't forget to like, subscribe if you made it this far, that's for sure. And uh, if you want to support the channel, uh, hit me on Patreon and uh, donate a dollar. Every little bit helps. Take care, guys. Have a great night. Take care of the people around you, the critters in your care, and of course yourself. Swim on.